Hello and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back here today for a brand new video again and once again we're going to be looking on the transfer front but this time it's not going to be a player that we're purchasing, it's going to be a player that we are possibly going to be selling on or loaning out. We're going to be looking into the future of highly rated youngster Alan Halilovic. Now I've had a lot of questions on Halilovic and I myself are quite a big fan. I do like him ever since he arrived with us in 2014 from Dinamo Zagreb. He was a young player and it was very, very similar to when Martin Odegaard joined Real Madrid. Alilovic was a little bit older when he came to us, but there was that hype surrounding him as a youngster, as a young player joining a big club. It was a big step for him and I must say that although, yes, he is a little bit older, he's handled it so much better than Odegaard has. His attitude was right from the moment go. He adapted well. He seemed to fit into his surroundings much better. He got on with his teammates and what he did then last year and at the, end, at the start of this season, he got himself alone to a La Liga club, which is really, really important for him. He went there and he's in a hard-working team in Sporting. He on a team that was battling relegation for most of this season and fantastically they, they survived it on the final day and certainly in the first half of the season Halilovic was a massive massive player for Sporting really really important for them he played a number 10 role he was playing wide as well Abelardo former Barcelona player and friend of Luis Enrique took him under his wing and certainly Halilovic would have learned very much a lot from his time at Sporting in terms of his work ethic and also in terms of just adapting to La Liga, the physicality of it um, and also the speed of the game you know, and he would have learnt an awful lot the other thing as well of course is that he played against us when uh, when we played Sporting and that's the beauty of it, you know, when we loan players out we, we allow them to play against us because what better preparation for a player going on alone than preparing against a team like us, you know, if you can play against us you can play against anyone, so really really good to see Halilovic going out there putting himself out there, taking a risk by joining a team that was going to be down the bottom of the table but he's done really well and I think like I say certainly in the first half of the season he was really really promising at Sporting a key player for them I think then possibly he suffered a little bit of burnout Abelardo made a little bit of a comment about Halilovic in training so possibly he felt the effects were really really strenuous first half of the season and then he didn't have as much impact in the second half coming off the bench possibly not always getting that starting role but I mean if we look at his stats from his first season in La Liga out on loan he he made 24 starts for Sporting Gijon and he appeared off the bench 12 times. So that's 36 appearances out of 38 games that he appeared in in La Liga. So certainly he may not have always been starting but he was a big player this season for Sporting Gijon and a young player just 19 years old to come onto the scene for the first time ever in La Liga and, and really apply himself in that way was really really promising and it's not only about his ability we know what he can do on the ball we saw it all at Barcelona B but it's about that mentality when you've come to a big club when you've come to the country for the first time it's always about adapting about being yourself about learning new things developing and letting different coaches influence you you know you've got it everywhere you go at a young age you've got to learn from it you've got to take something from that spell you can't let any of your career to be wasted and certainly this year would have been very very valuable to Halilovic so in those 24 starts he scored three goals and got five assists uh, he's got one man of the match award in that time but like I say he may not be massive massive reading in terms of his stats and his goals and his assists but what he was doing he was a really big part of that team in the first half of the season I thought he played really well in some games and it was quite incredible in their first few games of the season to see this 19 year old kid come into a team like Sporting and really be driving it, be the leader in that team at such a young age, you know, be the real vocal point of that team. And like I say, he adapted himself well to his positions as well. He wasn't just restricted to playing in wider areas. He was playing as a number 10. He was playing in a creative role. But like I say, he also worked very, very hard. In those games, he actually picked up six yellow cards. And I remember against us, actually, there was a few big tackles from Hilalovic. So he certainly learned that in terms of working hard, the uh, the tracking back element of it, defensive side of his game, which, of course, for a Barcelona player, whenever you're playing, you've always got to work hard. You've always got to press the ball. You've always got to be on the move. So Hilalovic certainly would have learned a lot. But now, of course, we're talking about the next step in his career what is going to be the next move for Halilovic and there was a lot of rumours first of all that if Sporting stayed in the division then they would like to keep Halilovic but it's come to the stage now where it's a decision that Alan has got to make does he want to stay at Sporting Gijon and have another season there? Possibly they may be down the bottom once again, possibly might be a little bit further up, or does he go to a more established La Liga club, somebody who is higher up the table, but then of course you're not guaranteed the amount of game time. So that's a decision that Halilovic has got to make, he's got to be reserved about it, and of course there's the possibility that we won't just be loaning him out. There's been extreme rumours that we are going to sell Alan Halilovic. Now, don't get too angry, don't get too worried just yet, because it's going to be quite similar, I think, to the deal with Denis Suarez. 
first with Denis Suarez, we, we loaned him out to Sevilla, then it got sold on to Villarreal, and of course this summer it looks increasingly likely that we're going to be able to sign him back in about you know 3 million euros. So it's not going to be much at all. But what we're going to be doing with Halilovic is selling him on to a club. At the moment it looks very much like it's going to be Valencia. We're going to be selling him there for about 5 million euros. Now he bought Halilovic from Zagreb for about 2 million, so there we're making a 3 million profit, and then apparently we're going to have a buyback clause on him for the next three years. In the next three years, the buyback fees could be around 10 million or it could rise in the final year to 15 million. So we could be buying Halilovic back in sort of one or two seasons for 5 million euros extra. Now you may be saying, why would you bother selling him? Why would you bother selling him? Why not loan him out for two years? What it does is and it certainly worked this way, I feel, with Danny Suarez, um, and certainly with him. And a little bit at the start of the season with De Fe, he was really good for Everton. It looked like he may be on his way back. He was playing that well, but he fell away a little bit as well. But what it does by selling him on to a club, he belongs to Valencia. If he goes to Valencia and he signs on the dotted line there, and he is a Valencia player, we've got a buyback, but he's a Valencia player then, he will feel like he's got to prove himself. Because sometimes when players go out on loan, if their attitude isn't always right, they'll go out on loan for that year and they'll waste it. They'll be good in periods, but they will no be nowhere near their ability. They won't show it because they'll feel like, well, at the end of this loan, I'm just going to go back to my club anyway. I've got nothing to prove. I don't really need to impress anyone that much because at the end of this loan, I'm going back anyway. This isn't really my club. I'm not too bothered. If Halilovic belongs to Valencia, if a player goes and signs for a club, the fans are on their shoulders. They've got to really go in and impress because they know, number one, if I don't play well over this spell, I'm not going to earn my move back to Barcelona. And number two, also, if Barcelona don't want to sign me back, I've got to make sure I make my stamp here at Valencia. So it just gets that bit of mentality in them, gets them thinking about their game and really trying to bring the best out of them. So there is some flaws with buyback deals and stuff like that. Yes, we have to pay a bit more in the end. But if Hanilovic develops in the way that he can, and if he can do that in these years at Valencia, then it's certainly a good deal. Because if you're buying him back for 5 million, even 10 million euros extra, if Hanilovic can develop in the way that he knows we can, if he can become that player that we know that he possibly could be, it'll be well worth it. It really, really will, because he's, he's a player that really excites me. And I just don't think he's quite ready next season to step in, but certainly the season after that, 2017, you'd expect him to be coming into this team and making his mark. There'll be players who are moving on, you know, getting on in their careers at Barcelona. We'll need some refreshing in that midfield, and I think Halilovic could certainly provide that. He's a creative player, he's got sp he's got, pe he's got pace, he's got a bit of power about him, you know, he's very small, he's a lot like the Messi in this size wise but he's got quite a big build you know, he's, he's not going to be pushed off the ball so easily. You know, he's quite strong. And, you know, he's low centre of gravity. And he's good at going past players. He's a fantastic dribbler. His close control is outstanding. You just watch him for a few minutes and you understand his game just by watching him then. Because he's got that, he's got the consistency about his dribbling. He's got that flair. He's got that talent. And he's just one of those players that you just want nurtured so that he really does unlock his full potential. Because with players like this, it's very, very easy to go off the ball, to lose focus. And we've got to make sure that we send him to a club where he's going to get the best treatment and where he's going to develop his game the best. Now, Valencia is an interesting one for me. That is not my preferred choice. Personally, I would have loaned him or, or sold him Villarreal would have been a great option because simply look what they've done with Denis Suarez for us. You know, they're a fantastic team, going places, confident. They play a good style of football. Marcelino is a fantastic manager. The problem with selling for Valencia is, number one, they're not going through a good period at the moment. Number two as well, they've not even got a manager in place at the moment, so you're not really sure what style they're going to be playing next season. But no doubt in they are a big club. And if Halilovic can go there and if he can possibly galvanise them next season and he can be, play a big part of that, Valencia could get back up the table. And when they are on fire, they're a huge club. So it is a a big opportunity for him because Valencia is a massive club but of course you want them to get back to where they should be but certainly loans to possibly Villarreal there was talks about Celta Vigo possibly uh, Sevilla as well under Unai Emery we've seen a lot of players go there for us on loan but certainly I think Halovic needs to make that step up going back to Sporting would give him game time would give him consistent La Liga game time but I feel like he needs to be competing in European competitions within the next few years he needs to be testing himself around the very best players and against the very best players and I think Valencia would be an interesting one just as long as they get a decent manager in place they make some good signings this summer and of course what's very interesting is if we do sell Halilovic to Valencia they owe us one 
And in that, I mean, we may well be getting Mustafi coming the other way. There's also reports that they want Bartra. So if we gave them Bartra, if we gave them Halilovic, if they can sign those players, we may well see Mustafi coming the other way in a sort of tied up deal with that. So it's going to be very, very interesting what happens. Halilovic's agent has confirmed Valencia's interest. And he's also said that he would prefer that Halilovic went to Valencia. So that's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. Barcelona haven't really commented on that matter at the moment. They're still trying to see if that is the right place to send Halilovic. But right now, it does look as though we'll be selling him with a buyback option for three years. We're going to be selling him for 5 million euros, and he could be coming back in the next three years for 5, 10, 15 million when it gets to that point. So leave me your thoughts down below, guys. What do you think about Halilovic? If you had your way, where would you send him? What club would you want to see him at in La Liga? Or would you want to see him go to possibly the Premier League, Bundesliga? What would you want to do with him? And also, what is your thoughts on this sort of buyback seat system? Do you think we should be loaning players out, or do you agree that buyback does have its advantages so leave your thoughts down below guys always glad to hear those i'll be back very very soon for another video for you but until then as always let's go el barca, barca!